Welcome to the most beautiful island of Greece. The most beautiful. The most. A far-flung paradise for sun-starved Northern Europeans. Dutch, Germans, Brits. Kos is one of a group of remote islands closer to Turkey than to the Greek mainland. So close you can see the Turkish coastline from the shore. More than a million tourists flock here each year and that on an island with a population of just over 30,000. But this year, the pleasure seekers have company. Part of a wave of migration overwhelming Europe. Every night they set sail from the Turkish coast in flimsy rubber boats. One or two thousand land on cause every week. Some are asylum seekers, others are economic migrants fleeing poverty and a lack of opportunity. They emerge from the Aegean waters exhausted and disoriented. These men from Pakistan don't even know where they are. What is the name of this place? Cause. Cause Island. Cause Island. Greece. You know it's Greece? Yes. Yeah. This is yes. your destination? <laughs> we don't know really. We don't know it's Cause, it's Greece or it is whatever. But we just know that it's a safe area for us. First, we have to dry our clothes and we have to find any place to stay and take a rest because, you know, it's not a very easy journey. So we, do, we, we spend a very hard time in the sea. What was hard about the journey? Was it rough seas or what was so hard? The motor was not working uh, in the sea and we start uh, by, uh, by, by on our hand and then we try to uh, make again a motor. So in the middle of the sea, it would start again, and then we start uh, we start the journey again. So. So you're using yeah. your hands. Yeah, we use our hands. Within minutes, the men have disappeared into the night, leaving behind the unmistakable signs of a migrant crossing. get a real sense of just why so many people are trying to make this crossing from Turkey just here to Greece it's just a few nautical miles at this point and that's tantalizingly close for the many many thousands of people who want to get to Europe and that means that night after night they're going to continue to try and cross this small stretch of sea looks safe enough, but migrants have drowned off the Greek islands and the people of Kos know they too may soon bear witness to such tragedies. Uh, unfortunately, I'm afraid that uh, it is a matter of time before lives are lost because uh, uh, the numbers are significant and they're getting higher every day. And uh, we're talking about, this, about sea. Uh, it's a difficult and dangerous passage, whatever uh, it takes. I'm afraid that the mathematics will be against these people. Just another day okay. in the new life of the Cause Coast Guard. Where, where we are going? Where are we going? Over here, Greece. Yes. We have. Okay. Yes. We have oh, are you sure? Oh, you you man. promise? Man. You, you, you promise? My friend, we you have children here. Please, please. They come from as far away as Afghanistan and Pakistan. But most, like the people on this boat, are from Syria. My wife, she have a baby. Sit down! Sit down! I know! I know! Sit down! Each 
has a story to tell. Each has paid dearly to come here. Among them, Rana, a paediatrician from Aleppo. Are you hoping to bring your children? Yes, of course. I do that for, for them, not for me, of course. I'm old enough to, yeah, to do anything, but they, they are too young. Yeah. What they age are you your children? They are safe now in Turkey, waiting for me. Yeah. And on what age are they? Uh, one uh, uh, 50 and one uh, 8. Which country do you want to end up in in Europe? What are your plans? Europa, in Europe. Oh my God. The first time I, I get apart from my children. It's first day. <laughs> We're always together. Is enough, okay? You okay? No, no problem, any country, please. Okay, please stop, please stop. Any plan? Please stop any, pl any country we safe again. We'll be safe again, together again, family again. In the last few months, the work of the Coast Guard has changed from patrolling the ocean to conducting back-to-back -back search and rescue missions. What kind of emotional toll does the work take on your staff? The work is uh, quite demanding, there is stress, uh, and it's 24-7. I don't think that there is a more important uh, task uh, than saving lives, and uh, this is exactly what keeps us going, because uh, uh, it's, it's a significant burden for everybody. Night after night, they fish migrants from their rubber boats and bring them to shore. No sooner has one boatload been processed than another pulls into port. Here, a group of around 40 men, women and children, mostly from Syria. Who speaks English? Good English. I need a person who speaks good English. Mohammed, a sound engineer from Damascus, their unlikely leader, selected for his superior English skills. Please, whoever, whoever has passport, keep it in his hand, OK? Show it and keep it in his hand. Yes, sir. Send it. Who has a passport, he will put it in his hand. I'm so pleased. Thanks, God. Well, I... I can't believe myself now. I can't believe myself that I am in Greece finally. This is our second, uh, second trial. The Turkish Coast Guard thwarted Mohammed and his friends' first attempt to cross to Greece. The punishment, a night in open air confinement back in Turkey. A day later, no problem. The smugglers arranged another boat. This time, the group made it into Greek waters before being picked up. This is a dream came true for us. In Syria, you know, in Syria, it's, it's not uh, human at all. Uh, they uh, uh, treat us in Syria like, uh, not like animals. Animals are better than us. And I don't want to, to tell you any story about Syria, but uh, believe me, it's held now. Once the formalities are over at the port, it's onwards to the Captain Elias, an abandoned hotel serving as emergency accommodation for the migrants. There is no official reception center for migrants on cause. The Captain Elias is as good as it gets. The local council says it has no money to fund anything better. Athens, even less so. 
A strange protocol dictates, nevertheless, that each boatload officially processed at port is brought here to this unofficial accommodation. After that, they're left to fend for themselves. How can we get food and clothes and... You buy it. Ah, we can go outside. Yeah, for for mm -hmm. food, okay. for accommodation, sleep. Sleep here. We'll take a look inside. Oh, very nice place. Apparently. Hello. Hello. So, so Mohammed, what, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if there are some clean rooms, uh, maybe we can stay, but I don't think so. We're trying to this, get uh, out of this. Does, does everyone in the group have money to, to pay for your I don't, I don't. I don't know, I don't think so. Some of them may stay here for free. of this year, 68,000 migrants arrived in Greece by sea. You? Yeah. You're sure? Yes. So many that Greece has now overtaken Italy as the preferred route into Europe. It's making things hard for islands like Kos, which survive on tourism. You're here on a holiday to relax, and well, you don't really want them roaming around near your, your sun beds and uh, if they're just act as a guest that's all fine but you know you don't want them st staring at you or uh, yeah, bothering you or asking you for money begging it's a difficult balancing act for the mayor of cause George Kiritsis. Ο τουρίστας που έρχεται θα δει μια άλλη εικόνα. Όταν ξαφνικά θα δει ανθρώπους οι οποίοι είναι ε, κουρασμένοι, εξαθλειωμένοι, με ρούχα τα οποία είναι βρεμένα από τη θάλασσα και τα βλέπει ξαφνικά μπροστά του, αυτό του δημιουργεί μια εικόνα πολύ άσχημη, ίσως και του προκαλεί και μια στενοχώρια. Most migrants will leave these shores, hoping to settle in northern and western Europe. For now, they're Greece's responsibility. Another burden on a country that's flat broke. The Syrians we meet at the port have decided to pass on the Captain Elias. They can afford to pay 35 US dollars a night to share a room at a local hotel. Hi, how are you? Hello. Mohammed, the sound engineer, Yaman, a dentist, and another young man they met on the boat, Azar, a pharmacist, have spent their first night in Europe. Middle class Syrians turned asylum seekers by a war they want no part of. If we uh, had a formal way to go, to Europe, I wouldn't think of uh, going this way. I tried, I tried and tried and tried. No visa, they will not accept. Like for example, the Norwegian or the Swedish uh, embassy, they will not, even if you pay money, if you, if you say that I am a millionaire, I have a million dollars or a million something. And they wouldn't talk in detail about why they left Syria. They're too worried it might endanger their families who are still there. I know you don't want to talk about the politics, but just give me a sense of why you felt you had to leave Syria. I didn't want to be a part of this war at either side. I don't like people 
fighting and maybe for a good cause or maybe for not a good cause, but I don't see fighting your brother is a good cause. We're trying to get to what we think is a migrant boat. Been tracking it for about half an hour now. It was coming this way, but it now looks as though it's turned and it's going into shore. It looks pretty small, like maybe only a few people on board. In the end, it was three men in a boat. A fourth made up for the lack of a motor. Behind them, an odyssey. In front of them, the Greek army. They came ashore just meters inside a military base. Freedom would have to wait a little longer. At a cafe on the edge of town, a newly formed group of local volunteers is doing what the government says it can't afford to, providing for the migrants. Do you think you have to do this because yes. the Greek government can't? Well, not only because they can't, but uh, in any case, I'll do it. Yeah, I think that we have to do it. It's really important to have something to eat every day, just nothing more, nothing less. Mm -hmm. The group encourages local businesses to give leftover food, which it then distributes to the migrants. Is it a little bit ironic that people here, when t times are so tough here, that you are giving from yourself? Yes, but uh, that's also a really nice thing. Because you see that people they are in worse situation than you are. So we have to think about people. We have to be more uh, kind to each other. <laughs> Some tourists are also pitching in. I know that the people are staying here in this hotel and I passed by and yesterday the people they say they are so hungry and they need shampoo and they need a toothbrush. And then I decide I go to the supermarket and I buy some things, uh, some things for them and I bring it here to the, to, the, to the hotel. But when you see sometimes the sadness in the eyes, you know, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> Among the recipients today, another Mohammed. This one from Pakistan. Unlike his Syrian namesake, the factory worker from Lahore is making do at the Captain Elias. Yes, basically this is not a good place, but uh, the, we, have a, we haven't a more choice because this is the only one choice for refugees and migrants. Those are coming through to the ocean. And because they haven't have money, enough money. <laughs> because you can't sleep on the roads, on the parks, because you don't know anybody. You haven't uh, relatives there, you haven't uh, friends there. This is a totally strange country for you. All roads soon lead to the police station, where the migrants hope to get the registration papers that will allow them to travel on from the island. The document lets them stay in Greece for between one and six months as illegal immigrants. 
After that, they could face deportation if they haven't claimed asylum, moved on out of Greece, or gone underground. Kalimera. <laughs> Good, thank you. Looking for Mohammed. Oh. Mohammed. It's everybody. Mohammed, all the Muslim people. Everybody, everybody is Mohammed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the many Mohammed. You can escape war, but not Greek bureaucracy. Each boatload of arrivals is processed together. And Mohammed and his friends must gather together everyone in their group. A task complicated by the fact that some people are not who they say they are. Are you a bit stressed, Mohammed? Kind of. I was in the office now, and the police now. They told me uh, when you arrived here, I told them the date and the number of the group. After two minutes, she came back uh, to me and said, OK, all the group should come back tomorrow at 30. But it's an appointment for your group? Yeah, it's an appointment, some. Wait, but you're not happy? It's kind of disappointing. <laughs> I, did you have hope in the way she said it, that it would get to yeah, resolve? Yeah, she was smiling. <laughs> a very confused picture down here. We've had a lot of people coming up to us and saying, how do I get my passport back? How do I get this registration paper with which I can travel to Athens? And then almost like some desperate lottery goes on behind me where a man comes to the front gate, he reads out a list of names. These are the people who are going to get their papers and are going to be able to leave cause, which is what this group really desperately wants to do. Today, Mohammed from Pakistan has hit the jackpot. At last we get the paper after 14 days. I am very happy to get a paper and we'll go for my big journey and good luck. You do you pray for us? <laughs> we shall be successful, inshallah. It's been an epic journey for Mohammed from Lahore through Iran and Azerbaijan to Turkey, where he worked illegally for six months to make the 600 US dollars smugglers demanded to put him on a rubber boat to Greece. All that's left to do now is buy a one-way ticket to Athens. One step closer to his goal of a life in France. How are you, good? Eight o'clock, we must be down to the port, okay. opposite the police station. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Thank you. All the best. This is a new pant. I will take this pant in Athena. And this is my old pant. Now I will take this now. <laughs> now I am free. Now I have a chances because front of me is the whole Europe. I have lots of opportunities. And inshallah, I will do something better for myself. The desperation of the migrants means big business for smugglers. While a spot in a small rubber boat can set you back around 600 US dollars, the going rate for a larger boat is almost double that. No one ever meets the kingpin in this lucrative racket just a shadowy middleman, and there's a smuggler every step of the way. And what now? What happens when you get to Athens? Smugglers. <laughs> yep. The smugglers will get you a passport? Yeah, it's a similar passport, similar to my face, but different name too. And you go to the airport, show them the passport, and there's a uh, flight ticket ready, everything. Some arrive here without any identification papers at all. Others are using fake ID. 
For those who can pay, this too can be easily acquired through smuggler networks. Greek authorities have little way of knowing just who they're letting into Europe. If they want to choose what people are immigrating, they should uh, do a formal way, not this way. This way you're uh, taking a blind sample of people and they're just paying also the mafias and paying, paying the uh, smugglers to go. So uh, whoever can uh, pay a thousand dollar can <laughs> can go to Europe. And this is bad. I saw this from the trip. We, we, meet, we met uh, very bad people in our uh, trip and also we met uh, very good people. They come on a cheap rubber boat and leave on the imposing night ferry to Athens. This too now part of the ebb and flow of daily life on pause. Okay. Okay. Now we feel, of course, we feel better and we feel happy to get the papers. Bye bye. Yamen has already made contact with the smuggler in Athens. He's been told a fake passport will cost him at least 550 US dollars. I just sent him my photos to say, okay, there's a passport waiting for you. Azar can't afford the smuggler's fee and is planning to join the thousands of migrants attempting to leave Greece by foot. Marching through Macedonia and Serbia with the goal of slipping into another EU country. I think uh, which, uh, the next uh, step is harder than the last step. This was the easy bit, getting to Greece. That's what I mean. Well, getting to Greece was the easiest uh, step, I guess. What do you say in Arabic for cheese? <laughs> and so the cycle begins again. Another boatload of Pakistani men is plucked to safety. Fate, luck and sheer determination have brought them this far. They will need all of that and more to realise their dreams of a better life in Europe.